Hello and welcome to a new game from this CCC10 bonus 3 event. This time Lila plays Lilenstein in the French defense. We have e4, e6, d4, d5, knight c3, and now knight f6 and bishop g5, the burn variation. And after bishop e7, e5, knight back, we have h4, the Ayekin Shatard attack. And here now the book ends after short castles. Here black, as I mentioned already in a, in a previous video that I made in this opening, black can take here on g5 and after h takes and queen takes, win a pawn. But with the open h5, castling short is um, not so appealing anymore for black. And um, here white has a very good continuation with knight h3. Actually, uh, Korshnoi took this pawn on g5 against um, Kasparov and here Kasparov continued with queen d3 and uh, after knight c6 he played knight f3. Korshnoi played queen g6 and even though they exchanged the queens, uh, Kasparov played uh, very strongly. He played here knight b7, threatening c7 and eventually he managed to win. But even stronger than, uh, than queen d3, here after bishop takes, pawn takes and queen takes. Even stronger appears to be knight h3 hitting this queen and trying to force it back to e7 when queen g4 pressurizing g7 is very very strong. The black queen can try to stick around a bit with uh, queen h4 but after g3 uh, going to h6 is not very appealing so the best move for black is to go back and now after queen g4 White has a very nice game. Castling at this point, kingside is uh, not a good idea for black because after knight f4, white's attack develops naturally with moves like bishop d3, long castles, and then uh, pressure on h7. For example, knight c6, long castles, rook d8, and now bishop d3. And already black is in trouble. He's forced to play here f5. Something like g6 would um, fail immediately after rook h7 when the g6 pawn is weakened and allows white to, to sack the bishop <clears throat> and then play queen g6 check and mate on h1. So taking the pawn, yes, gives a pawn for black, but white will get very big pressure on the king side. So in this game, instead of taking on g5, we have castles. And um, in the other game that I mentioned, Stockfish played here h6, driving this bishop back. Remember that black didn't castle yet, so h6 was threatening to win the bishop. But here now, castling short again is not really possible because this bishop can sack itself at any point on h6 and uh, white would win. Instead of h6 though, in, uh, in this game we have Short castles, and this is the end of the book now. Lila played now queen g4, threatening bishop h6. And in the other game, actually, in the reverse game, Lila played here f6, and then there were some complications, and eventually they exchanged queens, and the game ended in a draw. In this one, Lilenstein tried rook e8, and now we had long castles, c5, hitting white center, and now f4 defending the e5 pawn and uh, now after knight c6 attacking this pawn again we had pawn takes on c5 knight takes and now knight f3 and here lila is already threatening nasty stuff for example bishop a6 here is, is quite dangerous and uh, after bishop f8 h5 and white is already threatening to take on g7 and then play h6 get back the piece on g7 and the h file opened up and um, the black king would be dead very very soon. So in view of, of these attacks, Lilenstein lashed out here with f5. He had to try something, but he wasn't very optimistic about his position. He evaluated this at plus 2.5 for white. But even though he was quite pessimistic about uh, his chances, he put up a very very strong fight in this game. The game now continued with e takes on f6, bishop takes, and now queen to h5. And by hitting this rook, she has now a whole new set of threats here. She's planning to take the bishop, and when uh, black will be forced to take back with the pawn, 
and uh, the king would be much weakened and uh, Lila would also have a lot of pressure against these pawns. For example, here bishop takes, g takes and now Lila could play here f5 to attack this structure and try to dismantle it. Bishop c4 uh, would be even stronger since this pawn on d5 is pinned. But just simply sacking the knight for these two central pawns is also very very strong because after the rook takes on d5 the queen is attacked and white uh, threatens to, to win back the piece with interest and if knight d7 then uh, bishop c4 threatening some nasty stuff is, uh, is very very strong this pretty much forces king h8 but now knight g5 could come with mate threat on h7 and also threatening a fork on, on f7 and if the pawn takes then after h takes on g5 the other rook joins the party and uh, white's attack is very very strong so after queen h5 Lilenstein uh, moved the rook to f8 and now we have f5 still attacking the the central pawns we have knight e7 defending d5 bishop takes rook takes and now knight g5 trying to take here and now we have h6 but this pawn is not really threatening to take on g5 because the h file opens up and Lila just simply took on e6. So if the pawn takes here, then after h takes on g5, the rook is hit, and Lila is threatening mate on h8, so this is not possible. And recapturing this pawn with either the bishop or the knight will um, lead to uh, black losing the d5 pawn and white having a better position with an extra pawn. For example, bishop takes, and now Lila could put even more pressure on this d5 pawn with bishop c4. And now after queen eight, they could exchange all the pieces, but in the end, uh, Lila would have a bishop against the pin knight, and uh, she would also have an extra pawn with a much better position here for white. Alternatively, if instead of bishop takes on e6, Lilenstein would take with the knight, then again, knight takes on d5, knight takes, and here now it looks like black won a piece, but actually after knight e4, both the rook and the knight are hit and um, white regains the piece with uh, interest again having the pawn extra so after f takes on e6 Lilenstein chose the best move queen f8 the point is that if now white takes here and the knight recaptures then this rook can take the knight because then white loses the bishop here with check However, Lila played here a very, very strong move, seen not only by her, but also by, by Lilenstein at this point. But apparently, this was the only way. Bishop c4 was played here, threatening to take back here. And after knight e7, temporarily, black is a piece up. But now, rook f1 is very, very strong. This rook cannot be taken, because then after rook f1, this queen is in trouble. Of course, if the queen takes, then the bishop recaptures. And the point of the variation is that if now the queen moves away, then white has a forced mate here after rook f8 check. If the king takes, then of course queen f7 mates. And if the queen takes, then still queen f7 check, hitting also the queen. And if the queen takes, then after e takes on f7 check, the king doesn't have many options. If he goes here, then gets mate in on h7. And if it goes into the corner, then of course white promotes and uh, mates next. So actually best after queen f7 check for black is to just simply ignore the queen and play king h8 here and give up the queen. Uh, because then after knight g8 and e7 he can follow it up with bishop e6 and drag the game on a bit. But of course white would win anyway. So after rook f1, taking this rook is uh, not possible. Lilenstein took here the knight on g5, since now the rook is not in the h1 square to threaten mate on h8. And after pawn takes, now took the rook, but of course after rook f1, the queen has to take, because otherwise black gets mated. We have bishop takes. And white is up material, if I count it correctly, only by a single pawn. But we have a very, very interesting imbalance in the position. We have queen and three pawns versus rook and two knights. 
And now actually after bishop takes on e6, black restored material equality, but it's very hard to, to coordinate all those minor pieces. We now have queen e2, threatening b4, and then uh, winning one of these. We have a5, queen b5, rook f8, counterattacking the bishop. So if queen takes here, then rook takes on f1. We have bishop e2, and now rook back to c8, but black loses now one pawn. We have knight f5, king b1, knight d4, and now bishop d1, anticipating an attack on c2 with uh, knight, rook, and uh, bishop. We have bishop f5, and now after g4 and bishop g6, we have now queen c3, pinning this knight to the rook and not allowing it to move. We have knight e6, bishop f3, rook d8, threatening mate in 1, king c1, king f7, b4, and now after knight e4, the queen goes to e5 to hit this knight again. We have rook d4, but now after queen b5 and king e7, Lila wins the pawn on b7, and she now has three passed pawns. Lilenstein continued with rook d7, and now we have queen b8, and Lilenstein uh, wins back one of those pawns. Bishop c6, rook c7, and now b5 and those white pawns should uh, finish the job here for lila we have uh, knight back c4 knight e5 bishop d5 knight d7 queen a8 bishop f7 queen a3 check and now knight to c5 and these two knights are uh, creating a very nice blockade on the c5 square but lila also has a b and the a pawn to uh, to advance the game now continued with queen e3 check bishop e6, king c2, rook c8, and now bishop c6, g6, and after king c3, rook f8, we finally have bishop takes on d7, removing one of those knights and allowing the c pawn to move now. We have c5, rook a8, and now queen d4. The a pawn is, is not really needed anymore. We have rook takes, and now c6, knight f6, and b6. And those pawns are marching forward. Knight d5 check, king d3, rook a3 check, king d2, king d6, and now b7. And Lila gives up the c6 pawn, but she will promote the b pawn. Rook b3, queen h8, king takes on c6, and now we have a new queen on the board. The rook has to take. Queen takes, king d7, king d3, king e7, king d4. This is still not easy. Lila has queen versus uh, bishop and knight, and she needs her king to restrict the black king. We have knight f6, queen b4 check, king f7, g5, knight d7, queen d6, knight f8, king e5, and knight d7 check, king e4. So the king has trouble approaching, but eventually she will succeed. We have knight f8, queen d8, knight d7 king d4 knight f8 king e5 bishop f5 now king d6 knight a7 queen c7 check king g8 and now king e7 and the king gets in here now the knight could take here but we get there anyway we have first king g7 and now after queen d8 we have knight takes on g5 and of course they play from uh, table bases by now we have queen d4 check, king g8, queen f6, and the queen is now restricting the black king. After knight a7, we have queen f7 check, and after king a8, black is actually in Zugzwang. Here after king d6, black doesn't have moves, the king can't move. The knight can go to f8 because it gets lost. It can't go to g5 either because it gets lost after queen f6 check. So this pretty much forces the bishop to move, the, the pawn can't move either. But now after bishop moves, this bishop is very, very vulnerable. It's separated from the king and from the pawn. And now Lila can win it after a series of checks. There was nothing to do here for black anymore. Here now after queen b6 check, the bishop gets lost. And now we have knight f6, king e7. And now the same thing will happen with the knight. Uh, Lila will just restrict the king, will put it in Zugzwang, here she wins another pawn, and after king h4 we have queen g8, 
and now knight f4 and here king f6 knight h5 check king g6 and the knight is, is also lost now because if it goes to f4 then after king f5 lila would be threatening both the knight and mate on on g4 so the knight went to g3 but now after queen c8 again the king is immobilized can't move so that means the knight has to move and then it gets lost if the knight goes here then it gets pinned and won same thing if it goes to e4 it gets pinned so the knight went to uh, to e2 but now there's queen c4 check winning the knight and from here on is uh, just uh, a walk in the park for Lila, king f3, king f1, and now finally mate on d1. This was a very, very tough fight between Lila and Lilenstein, but Lila in, in the end managed to win. Thanks also to table bases. I'm not sure that without table bases she would be able to win this. I would like to thank to Mark Martel for his uh, $10 contribution to my channel, and also thank to Rene Adolf. Sebastian, Todor, Radu and Guilherme for their contributions. Please subscribe, like and share and check out some of the other games. Thanks for watching and see you soon. Bye bye.